Hi everybody, my name is Queen Sylvia 7 for Completed in Christ because he made me new and I just wanted, I don't know why I just said that but that's the truth and <clears throat> um, I'm having I'm having a hard time understanding this word but I'm gonna come on here and do my best to receive it to receive it, to deliver it. Um, so, Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me what to say to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Lord. Okay, you guys. One day, Elisha... This is from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8. Elisha and the woman from Shunem. One day, Elisha went to the town of Shunem. A wealthy woman lived there. And she urged him to come to her home for a meal. Um... Okay, so she actually sets up a room for Elisha, the prophet, to rest his head and to like come rest when he comes to visit. And then he 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 wanted to to bless her, and so he he he. You know, she thought she had everything she needed, everything she wanted. She was married, but her husband was very old. She didn't have any children. She was wealthy, okay? She was wealthy. She was a wealthy woman, so she didn't think she did. She needed anything. So, but then Elisha, his, his servant says she doesn't have a son, you know? So he prophesies over her and says, in verse 16, next year at this time, you will be holding a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she cried. Oh, man of God, do, don't deceive me and get my hopes up like that. But sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant. And at that time, the following year, she had a son. But just as Elisha had said, one day when her child was older, he went out to help his father who was working with the harvesters suddenly he cried out my head hurts my head hurts his father said to the one to one of the servants carry him home to his mother so the servant took him home and his mother held him on her lap but around noontime he died she carried him up and laid him on the bed of the man of God then shut the door and left him there she sent a message to her husband send one of the servants and a donkey so that I can carry so that I can hurry to the man of God and come right back why today he asked it is neither it is neither a noon festival nor a Sabbath but she said it will be all right So she saddled the donkey and said to the servant, hurry, don't slow down unless I tell you to. As she approached the man of God at Mount Carmel, Elisha saw her in the distance. He said to Gehazi, look, the woman from Shunem is coming. Run out to meet her and ask her, is everything all right with you, your husband and your child? Yes, the woman told Gehazi, everything is fine. So she didn't want to tell him. But when she came to the man of God at the mountain, she fell to the ground before him and caught hold of his feet. Gehazi began to push her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone. 
She is deeply troubled. But the Lord has not told me what it is. Then she said, Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? And didn't I say, Don't deceive me and get my hopes up? Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that the Lord has given somebody a promise. You received the word of the Lord through, through the Lord's prophet. And just like we're seeing here, the promise comes to pass. But now you think the promise, the promise, you think you've lost it. You think that it's dead, that it's, that it's over with, that it's, that it's gone, that, that, just that, that you've lost it, that it's, that it's too late. It's not even necessary. This, this promise isn't even something that you have asked God to do for you. It isn't something that, it isn't something that you requested for God to do for you. Nonetheless, the Lord sent a word to you to prophesy this promise over you. Because it will, it, it, it is coming to pass. And it has come to pass. And now, for some reason, you feel you it's 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 gone that you it's gone that it's gone. And um, and so. And so the woman said, the, the woman said, didn't I tell you, don't get my hopes up. Don't get my hopes up because the, the, the promise that you received, the word that you received of this promise was something actually good and cool. And like, at first you're like, Oh no, like of course you you know it seemed maybe too good to be true. But but now it's gone and you're like Lord, I didn't even ask for this and now you you're taking it away. It's gone. Why? Have faith, okay? Because the story doesn't end there. So then Elijah said to Gehazi, get ready to travel. Take my staff and go. Don't talk to anyone along the way. Go quickly and lay the staff on the child's face. You see the instruction, the instruction the prophet gave to his servant to go ahead of him to try to restore the promise, right? But the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I won't go home unless you go with me. <clears throat> so Elisha returned with her. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry. So that is to show that Gehazi, Ge Gehazi doesn't, carry the anointing that Elisha has on his life. Okay? And 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 you don't what, what you don't need somebody else right now. Okay? What you need <clears throat> who who you're seeking is probably The one that God told you in the first place, used to tell you in the first place <clears throat> that you were going to receive this promise from the Lord. 
And so Elisha returned with her. <clears throat> you guys, I don't know what's going on with my throat. <clears> throat. This is the second time like I make a video and all of a sudden like something, I don't know. Gehazi hurried on ahead and laid the staff on the child's face, but nothing happened. There was no sign of life. He returned to meet Elisha and told him the child is still dead. When Elisha arrived, the child was indeed dead. Lying there on the prophet's bed, the same bed that the mom built for him to rest. And this is the man of God. The spirit of God is with this man. With Elisha. You see? So she laid him on the bed where... Where, where he, where that she made for him. Then he lay down on the child. Um, he went in. Okay, when Elisha arrived, the child was indeed dead, lying there on the prophet's bed. He went in alone and sh alone, and shut the door behind him. So he left the mom and Gehazi out, prayed to the Lord. Then he laid down on the child's body, placing his mouth on the child's mouth, excuse me, his eyes on the child's eyes and his hands on the child's hands. And as he stretched out on him, the child's body began to grow warm again. But Eli Elisha got up, walked back and forth across the room once and then stretched himself out again on the child. So sometimes they seem you're you're moving by faith. You go, you go by faith. But then Elisha gets off and starts pacing because he's waiting. He's waiting for God to make the move. He's waiting for God. And it's working a little bit. It's working. And so he gets back on. He gets back on him. Elisha got up, walked back and forth across the room once more. Then he stretched himself out again against the child. This time the boy sneezed seven times. Seven. The number of completion. Just like in my name. Seven. Seven times and opened his eyes. Then Elisha summoned Gehazi. Call the child's mother, he said. And when she came in, Elisha said, Here, take your son. She fell at his feet and bowed before him, overwhelmed with gratitude. Then she took her son in her arms and carried him downstairs. Okay, so he it's 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 not gone, it's alive. Your promise is not dead. Your promise is not gone. You didn't lose it. It's not too late. Okay? Nothing is impossible for God. With God, all things are possible. Okay? Whichever way you want to hear it, there it goes. It's not too late. Okay? Have faith. And be at peace because the promise is alive through Jesus Christ. Okay? All right, I love you. God bless you.